Hello, fans. I'm Brad Nessler alongside my colleague Dick Vitale. We're here to call tonight's matchup between the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Indiana Hoosiers. And, of course, here's our starting lineup. Hey, Brad, the match at the center position should really be exciting. These kids get big plays, big plays, and will often do so at opportune times. Tonight should be a good one, as we've got two excellent centers that will be battling it out down low. Number 22 is definitely the man in charge when he's out on the floor. Starting across from him tonight is a defensive force when it comes to blocking shots, Brad. He can really change a game defensively. I couldn't agree more with you, partner. Let's get down to the court and join the action. Well, here we go. And with the tip, we're underway here in the first half. Isolated on the outside. They're working around the arc looking for the open jumper. The skip pass is picked off. A little two-man action. Looking for a good shot. And has it rejected. Defense did a great job with that blocked shot. Number five takes the pass. Basic. The defender is still applying great blood pressure, Brad. Ten seconds remaining on the shot clock. Both teams looking to get things going here. I tell you, he missed the post guy. The post guy had the great angle. He was locking on the box. Baseline jumper knocks it down. Turn around jumper. Rebounding is such an effort thing. Getting to the glass, blocking out. There aren't enough good rebounding teams in the nation. Smart receives the pass. On the dribble, gives it up. Ten seconds to put it up. Up and in. That's a breakdown. That'll drive a coach bananas. I'm going to lose you here. Number five handles the pass. They work it around the perimeter. He tries to knock down the three. He buries it. Faces up on a low block. I think it's great when you got a post player that can face up on a defensive player and attack the basket. Inside, he takes the shot off the baseline. Freeman comes in for his first go round tonight. I'll tell you, the offense doesn't miss a beat when this guy comes in. He goes to the line for the first time. He makes the first shot. Trouble here, Dick. Great trap, Brad. Hey, dodge one there, Brad. The point guard gets the pass. Moving it around the perimeter. Ten seconds to put it up. 
turnaround jumper. The Buckeyes have found a player who cannot seem to miss it. That is on fire. The Hoosiers like to play that half-court style of play. Would you agree with that? Man, half-court teams will try to out-execute their opponent. They're extremely patient and try to always utilize the clock. Oh, the cheerleaders into it big time for their team. They are really involved. I'll tell you one thing, they bring a lot of spirit. Coaches love it when their team gets to the free throw line. It's an opportunity to put points on the board and potentially get the opponent in foul trouble. Got him right where they want him, Dick. He almost found himself in some trouble there, Brad. On the outside. Ten seconds to put it up. I'll tell you, great job protecting the basketball, getting deep post position, and the jump hook is so effective. Looking for the pick now. Hey, the two-man game is great to watch when you have an intelligent dribbler and a skilled big man. Way off target. Roberts receives the ball. Now they work it around the perimeter. Three-prong attack tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brad Nessler with Dick Vitale and our friend EA. Aaron Andrews checking in from the sideline. All right, let's check in third member of our team again. Here's Aaron Andrews. The Buckeyes' focus coming into this game was to slow down the tempo. At present, the coaching staff is very happy with how they've been able to uphold this style of play. The coach has been praising them for their patience offensively and tough defense to this point. Guys? Thanks, EA. Aaron Andrews providing that extra bit of insight for us. All right, let's check in third member of our team again. Here's Aaron Andrews. The Hoosiers coaching staff was all over their players in that last time out. They aren't happy with the level of concentration or execution they're bringing to the table. They believe these are keys to winning the game and that they may be in trouble if they don't address them right away, Brad. It takes a certain kind of person to be a college coach, wouldn't you say, Dick? That's for sure. If you want to be the man on the sideline, you have to be ready to accept the world of responsibility. Something is on the line every game and you have to get everyone on your team on the same page and play with passion. Tries for two. Off the rim and no good. Number 12 takes the pass. Teams are looking to get something going here. Looking to move it around the perimeter. Smart picks up the foul. First team foul. Oh, and you can see the frustration as he picks up the foul. Oh, that's a bad, bad foul right there, Brad. He squares up down on the low block. I tell you, teach your player to face up. You get in triple threat position. You can drive, shoot, or you can pass. Lucas handles the pass. Cross court. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Number 21 gets the pass. He doesn't get the hoop. Number 12 takes the feed. Looking for a good shot.
Goes up for two. They just can't seem to miss. They found a serious struggle with their shooting, Brad. Working it around the perimeter. Ted just doesn't beat him to the basket, not quick enough. And a great reaction by the defensive post player. Hey, they're going to have to watch that. Fatigue will make players do some silly things. And a momentary look from three-point land. For two. Can't get the shot to go. Don't allow him to have numbers. All right, let's check in third member of our team again. Here's Aaron Andrews. Well, Brad, the player matchup has been our focus tonight, and he's been effective because his teammates are finding him in the right spots, and he's knocking down all his shots, guys. Thanks, EA, our third member of our team, providing that additional insight. Second shot is no good. Smith handles the feed. Work the perimeter. Spacing so important. Get 15 to 17 feet apart. Turn around jumper. Gets the rebound. Men have got to get out and fill the lanes, Brad. They work the perimeter. of room misses the bomb pushes it up he shoots from the baseline way off target pushes it up seconds to put up a shot the point guard takes the pass he makes the block the lane. let's check out this replay Brad free throw. Sinks it. Dick, they're really getting it done from the line tonight, aren't they? And a surprisingly collective effort, Brad. Oh, he converts on that free throw line, and that's major. The ball goes out of bounds. This one will come in from the baseline. Tan on the shot clock. Tries for two. Up and in. Gave it up. Go 
goes up for two. And in and out. Up and inside. Or gets a hand in the way. Let's see if they can get a good shot this trip. The point guard takes the feed. It looks as though they have a shooter spotting up. They'd like to get it inside to the low block. Unable to so far. Nice job of packing it in defensively. Yeah, really doing a great job packing it in. Then a great job of anticipating that lateral pass. For the bucket, perfectly executed. Ball movement, get that good spacing. Tries for two, perfectly executed. Galloway handles the feed on the outside. it on the inside. What an explosive move to the goal. No wasted time. He had his mind made up. He was attacking the basket. Number three takes the pass. They're working around the arc. Courtside. What do you got for us, Aaron? The Buckeyes. Coaching staff is starting to make it quite clear that they want the pace of this game to stay where it's at. He recently commended his players for playing at a slow tempo, which suits their team well. They claim to be successful when they play in this manner, so expect for it to continue. Aaron Andrews, our sideline correspondent, as usual, providing that extra bit of insight. Smith handles the pass. Takes the jumper. And score it. Marker handles the pass. Ten seconds to get it off. They look to get it to the inside. Pull up jumper, left side. the shot clock cross court he dials long distance can't put it down the lane they work it around the perimeter Nice execution on the spin. That's a great spin move to the basket.
The small forward handles the pass. Excellent spacing. That's so important to a good offensive set. It's even more important to have talented guards like they have. Yeah, that helps. Tan on the shot clock. Turnaround jumper. He pulls it down. Two is whistled for the foul. Fourth team foul. Isolated on the outside. They're working around the arc looking for the open jumper. For two. Up and in. The dribble gives it up. Turns it over. The shooting guard with the ball. Looking for a good shot. on the shot clock. Strips the ball. Let's check in with Erin Andrews and what she's got in store for us, Erin. Well, guys, it's obvious the coaching staff wants the team to slow it down. The tempo is definitely not where they want it. The players have been instructed to run the shot clock offensively and force the opposition to play defense for extended periods of time. Aaron Andrews, our sideline correspondent. All of you know that with an additional insight there. Trying to feed the low block. Lots of room. Misses the three ball. Little bump. I like that. Now let's see if we can convert. Lucas goes to the line for the first time. Concentration. Got to concentrate. Wait, Rick sure. City. He hits his second. Receives the ball. That's basic. Number four is called for the foul. He goes to the line for the first time. First shot is good. No problem so far at the free throw line tonight, Dick. Well, they're making the most of the free ones. He got it. That line is really being good to him tonight, Dick. That line's always good, Brad. These guys just have to make good use of it. Trying to feed inside. And there's what the game tempo is looking like tonight. Two teams who are picking and choosing when they want to push the ball, Brad. The point guard gets the pass. Trying to go inside. Gets the ball and now faces his man down in the low block. Oh, very aggressive player once he got up in the face-up position in the post. Gave it up. The shot from the baseline. He gets it to go. On the dribble, gives it up. Turnaround jumper. I'll tell you, what a nice turnaround jump shot. Soft as velvet, fading away, impossible to block. And has it rejected. Defense did a great job with that block shot. The lay -in. A 
Conte, he missed the post guy. The post guy had the great angle, was locking on the box. Great defense, forcing a call of five seconds. Defensively. What a terrific job. Footwork really excellent on a post play. Top of the circle, they work it around the perimeter. Lucas picks up the defensive foul. Chance for an easy one. He misses the first shot. Three ones tonight, Mr. Vitale. Hey, this is where you win and lose games, Brad. And the half, the Hoosiers are ahead by five. Dick, we've got a close one here tonight, my friend. Give us your highlight of the night so far. My highlight, Brad, has to be the great work in the paint so far. It'll be interesting to see who keeps it up in the next half. We're about ready to start the second half, Dick. Let's go down and see how this one unfolds. Indiana showed dominance on the boards, Dick, in the first half. Yeah, and therefore they control the game. Rebound and wins games, my friend. They've got a three-point shooter spotting up. Cross court. Dick, in the second half, our player matchup update, and uh, they're playing very, very even right now, and they're not making mistakes. I tell you what, not making mistakes, and both are doing a great job getting to the free throw line. I think that's been essential, and they're converting on the line. Thomas handles the feed. Perfectly executed. Roberts handles the pass. Too physical. Well, here's a look at the tempo for both teams tonight, Nick. You know, it's crucial, Brad, that both teams stick to their style of play. If not, the chances of them winning definitely decreases. He goes to the line for the first time. It's the first. Got them both. Oh, he drained it. Got them a nylon, NBN. Down inside. They get an open three. No. Number 21 takes the pass. Moving it around the perimeter. Teach your player to face up and get in triple threat position. You can drive, shoot, or you can pass. Dumps it in. Goes up for two. And off the mark. Gave it up. He tries the three. Off the mark.
number two. They still don't score. And there's sort of a snapshot of our game tempo. A snail's pace, Brad. That's the tempo of this game. And if that's your philosophy, so be it. Now they work it around the perimeter. Here comes a pick. Hey, ball screens are such an important part of the game these days. Guys are so creative when it comes to using that ball screen. Cross court. Out of the trap, right? Garrett receives the pass. Ten seconds remaining on the shot clock. And there's a look at the backcourt comparison. Dick. Okay, Brad, you always want to know how the primary ball handlers are doing. Are they getting their team's quality shots? Good opportunities. The team which takes care of these things usually is in a better position to win a game. from the line tonight. That's a crucial plus down the stretch, Brad. He passes it out of the trap. The shooting guard gets the ball. Nails the deuce. Smart receives the ball. Looking to move it around the perimeter. The bucket off the rim and no good. Looking for a good shot. Tan on the shot clock. fouled him. Oh, and he's not going to be happy with that foul. What a silly foul right there, but look at his face. His facial expression tells it all. Tightly guarded. Working it around the perimeter. Nice move with a face up. I tell you what, thing, Brad, I like guys that are versatile in that post. Facing up is a way to take advantage of three basic moves. The small forward with the ball. Gave it up. He pulls up with a jumper. He hacked him. If you want to know how aggressive a team is, you check to see how many times they go to the free throw line. That's a great indicator. Second shot is good. They have found their stroke at the strike tonight, Dick. This has always been an excellent free throw shooting bunch. Fed the low block. Number 32's modest performance is bringing down his confidence level. Hey, well, offensively, he's probably not feeling it. Defensively, he's been a step behind. He's going to have to turn things around. Tries for two. The land. They've got a shooter spotting up on the three-point line. Smith may have escaped one there. And a momentary look from three-point land. Ten seconds to get a shot off.
Smith handles the pass. This is the big time. He misses the three. And the ball goes out of play. They'll throw this one in from the side. Works the perimeter. Spacing so important. Get 15 to 17 feet apart. Baseline jumper. Foul call. for a timeout at this point of the game, is there, Dick? There sure isn't, Brad. Anything can happen on any possession that a game can swing back and forth in a heartbeat. It's good if your team can get a minute to regroup and talk things over. The offense begins off the sideline inbound. They work the perimeter. Ten on the shot clock. Goes up for two. Up and in. Receives the pass. Kicks it out. Boy, terrible execution on offense. Number 12 takes the pass. There was no doubt about that one. Coming inside. Perfectly executed. Callaway handles the pass. Cross court. Trying to feed the low block. Turnaround jumper. The Hoosiers have got to continue to get him the ball. They need to keep feeding him the ball. It's simple. Lucas receives the pass. Open for a shot. And he makes the three. Dick, how about this highlight as our Pontiac game-changing performance? Wow, that's a great take, Brad. An ideal candidate for a Pontiac game-changing performance. Thomas receives the ball. Up and inside. Obvious foul. Let's go to the third member of our broadcast team. Here's Aaron Andrews. 
Brad, before the game, both coaches and players said they were looking forward to tonight's matchup. Whose weaknesses will be exposed and who will really step up, guys? Thanks, EA. Our third member of our team and our sideline reporter keeping us up to date with what's taking place behind the scenes and around the bench. Good job, EA. For such a variety of team styles these days, Dick, what are some of the qualities for a half-court team? They sure do, Brad. They operate in a manner which is very strategic. They run sets and often shoot the ball late in the possession. Gave it up. He fires away. Shot off. Callaway receives the pass. Courtside. What do you got for us, Aaron? The Hoosiers. Coaching staff is starting to make it quite clear that they want the pace of this game to stay where it's at. He recently commended his players for playing at a slow tempo, which suits their team well. They claim to be successful when they play in this manner, so expect for it to continue. That's, of course, Aaron Andrews, our correspondent on the sideline. On the dribble, gives it up. the shot clock on the elbow they feed down to the low block gets the feed down low now the turnaround jumper nothing but nylon nice smooth turnaround jumper the only negative he's falling away if he misses he's got no rebound in the building player fatigue seems to have set in here dick gave it up and there's a lazy pass it's stolen away turnover will it turn into two the other way They'd like to get it inside to the low block. Unable to so far. Nice job of packing it in defensively. Yeah, they're really doing a great job packing it in. Did a great job of anticipating that lateral pass. And has it rejected. Defense did a great job with that block shot. He doesn't get the hoop to fall. court ten seconds left on the shot clock refs call the foul the other way that's how you take a charge baby and he's gonna pick up the foul and all oh, look at the look on his face I tell you what he's disgusted but so is his coach for two and he can't hit the shot there's a look at the current tempo for the game the tempo is definitely on the slower side something that works well for some teams and not so well for others the power forward takes the feed trying to get that ball movement get that good spacing tries for two up and in check out this highlight courtesy of our friends at Pontiac Set in. He takes the open jumper. The Hoosiers have a hot hand right now that's scoring for them at the moment. That is on fire. The shooting guard handles the pass on the outside.
for two. Sweet looking shot. He is super. He really is. Sloan receives the ball. Now he faces up on the low block. I think it's great when you got a close player that can face up on a defensive player and attack the basket. There's the pick. The Hoosiers have found a player who cannot seem to miss it. They need to keep feeding the ball. It's simple. They'll work it around the arc. Was that beautiful or what? Pushes it up. Three-second violation. Better watch your feet. Oh, that's going to be a costly turnover. I'll tell you, turnovers can absolutely destroy a team. They work it around the perimeter. shot clock puts up the J number 32 with the defensive foul he steps up to the line first one good they're making good use of their free throw opportunities tonight good free throw shooting team seem to always give themselves a chance to win Isolated on the outside, they're working around the arc, looking for the open jumper. Now the turnaround jumper pulls down the board. They need to get out and run their lanes now. Gave it up. are lost because coaches fail to manage the clock. Possession, air, timeout situation. Let's see how these coaches fare tonight. He goes to the line for the first time. Gets his first. Dick, they're really getting it done from the line tonight, aren't they? And a surprisingly collective effort, Brad. from the line tonight. That's a crucial plus down the stretch, Brad. Well, let's take a look at the tempo each team is going to try to set for this game, Richard. Well, whenever you have two teams looking to control the speed of the game, you need to keep your eye on how each team makes changes. Setting the tempo can be an advantage, but adapting can be just as important. Garrett handles the pass. You can't get away with that. Dick, we all know how important it is to get to the free throw line. Well, there's no doubt about it. I think it's such an unbelievable plus. It means you're playing aggressive basketball, you're playing attacking basketball, and you're creating all kinds of foul problems for the opponent. Two-point game. That trap could spell some trouble. He passes it out of the trap. 
He tries the three ball. He can't get the bucket to fall. Listen to that reaction by the crowd. They're loving it. What a reaction, Brad. The fans are loving it. The student section is all rallied up, and they are ready to battle. They're rushing right now. My goodness. For the bucket. He got the bucket to go, and he'll have the chance to add one more. He saw the foul coming, Brad, but he got it up anyway. And there's a look at the foul situation so far. Hey, no, when to foul and when not to foul is a great skill to have. Coaches should always be communicating this with their team. Ohio State is in the bonus. At the free throw line. Opportunity. Good. They're shooting extremely well from the strike tonight, Dick. Yeah, they're making their coaches look good for making them shoot extra free throws every day. see now if they've gotten everything sorted out during that last timeout. Yes, it's time to see just how focused the team is. In a situation like this, it's all up to the five on the floor to carry out the game plan and play together at both ends of the floor. We're about ready to hit the floor. Five points separate these two squads right now. No one's leaving this building without a fight, Brad. shot. They have to foul to put them on the line and hope they miss. It's a three-point deficit. And that can change in a matter of seconds, baby. Hold on. Well, Dick, it looks like they're going to spend a little bit of time fouling right here. Here's a look at the foul situation. Well, Brad, following and knowing when the foul is an important part of the game. If you have fouls to give, sometimes it's better to commit one rather than giving up an easy basket. Makes his second shot. You don't need the desperation three. It's a two possession game. The deck execution coming out of a timeout is really important, wouldn't you say? Definitely, Brad. The play you call or defense you decide to run coming out of a timeout will make or break you. Good coaches will always ensure that their teams are clear on the expectations coming out of a timeout. Sometimes timeouts can take teams right out of their rhythm, Brad. Let's see what happens here. Cross court. He shoots from downtown. Little bump. Says, I like that. Now let's see if he can convert. It's good. No 
problems so far at the free throw line tonight, Dick. Well, they're making the most of the free ones. And yet another foul as they're just trying to hang on. Nobody likes this point of the game. The loose team is fouling in order to stop the clock. He'll go to the line. Hits that one. They have found their stroke at the strike tonight, Dick. This has always been an excellent free throw shooting bunch. Second one, good. They're nailing the free ones tonight, Mr. Vitale. Hey, this is where you win and lose games, Brad. I wouldn't mind seeing him change things up a little bit, Dick, here. I wouldn't be surprised either. He tries to beat the clock. He nails the bucket. Dick, what are your final thoughts on how these teams play? Well, Brad, the points of emphasis provide some valuable hints, suggestions, which can and should result in a better team performance. Achieving them may not always result in a win, but it does make winning more likely. Teams are so diverse these days. They play all different styles, and it's a matter of knowing your personnel. Primarily, their strengths and weaknesses. No shortage of great plays in this matchup, but this one definitely deserves a second look and the game's Pontiac game-changing performance. Dick, we know the TV business. You've got to have marquee matchups, but it's still about team basketball. Well, that's how you win. You've got to execute as a team. You've got to make sure the right people shoot the shot. And I'll tell you, the PTPers have responded, but they responded within a team concept. Indiana escapes with a win in this nail-biter. They'll be happy to walk away with a victory from such an evenly matched opponent. Brad Nessler saying so long for my partners, Dick Vitale and Aaron Andrews. Thanks for joining us.